Good morning, good morning, everyone. We're just gonna wait about another 60 seconds to make sure that everyone is able to log in, all right, to join us for the webinar today. Thanks for being on time. Well, welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for today's webinar for administering organizations for individual artist fellowships and arts administrators pipeline program. Just a note that this webinar is being recorded um, and a recording is going to be available on the program landing pages, along with this slide deck um, in the next week. So Feel free to take a breath, sit back, relax, um, soak in the information, and you are going to have it continuing to be available to you. I will also note that um, this webinar has closed captions. If that would be helpful to you, feel free to click the closed caption button within your Zoom dashboard and just select show subtitle. Um, we are going to be using a Q&A box for questions, um, so if you, we have a dedicated portion of the webinar for question and answer, so if you have questions, feel free to pop those in the Q&A box as they come up, and then we'll spend the last portion of our time together this morning answering those. Um, also, we do have Spanish audio available if that, uh, you'd prefer to hear this uh, presentation in Spanish. You can click the globe icon that reads interpretation within your Zoom dashboard and select Spanish. And with that, um, I'll greet you. Good morning. My name is Josie Miller. I use she, her, hers pronouns. I'm zooming into you from uh, the unceded territory of the Nisanan and Miwok peoples just south of the Kumseo, also called the American River in present day Sacramento. I am an arts program specialist here at the California Arts Council, um, and I am the manager for both the individual artist program and for the arts uh, administrator pipeline program and delighted to be with you this morning. 
And feel free to use the chat space uh, if you like to uh, introduce yourself to the group. Um, feel free to share pronouns, affiliation, um, and where you are Zooming in from today. Before we get started with our content, um, I would like to bring us into this space with a land and people's acknowledgement. I would like to note that the office of the CAC and my home is located on the unceded land of the Nisanan in present day Sacramento. The history of the Sacramento area and its people is rich in heritage, culture, and tradition. This area was and still is the tribal land of the Nisanan people. Sacramento was a gathering place for many local tribes who have lived throughout the Central Valley and the foothills for generations and were the original stewards of this land. We'd like to acknowledge the Southern Maidu people to the north, the Valley and Plains Miwok peoples to the south of the American River, and we'd like to honor the Patwin Winton peoples to the west of the Sacramento River. We acknowledge that we are standing on the tribal lands of Sacramento's indigenous peoples. And as part of our evolving acknowledgement process, I'd like to speak into the space, the resilience and labor of the people of the African diaspora, who through enslavement and exploitation have built this place. It is also a commitment to rectify past and present colonial violence inflicted upon people of the African diaspora and indigenous people globally, and here across Turtle Island and Abya Yala, also known as the Americas. And again, I invite you to utilize the chat space to um, offer your own land acknowledgements from where you are today. All right, so uh, this is our agenda for the next hour together. We've done our welcome and introduction, um, and we are going to then be talking through uh, roles of AOs, that's shorthand for administering organizations in partnership with the CAC and just the roles and responsibilities of each bodies in these granting relationships. Then we'll move on to applicant eligibility. Um, and then at that point, we'll take a deep dive into first the individual artist fellowship AO application, and then the arts administrators pipeline program AO uh, application. We'll follow that up by talking through the review criteria for both programs and the program timelines. And then at that point, we'll uh, turn to your questions and wrap up. Um, oh, and I'm hearing from uh, some of you, the chat feature says disabled when I try to post. Well, I, I apologize for that. Um, thank you for the heads up. The Q&A box is working, so feel free to use that space for the questions. And um, I just acknowledge uh, all of your presence here and I'm grateful for that. So jumping right in, uh, the roles and responsibilities of the CAC and administering organizations. Um, so as a bit of background, over the last three years, um, the California Arts Council has begun partnering with intermediary organizations to co-design and implement some of our grant programs. Um, this began with the pilot offering of the Arts Administrators of Color Fellowship, uh, which we are now calling the Arts Administrators Pipeline Program. That was in 2020. Um, and then we also utilized AOs um, for our rapid relief for individual artists grant programs in 2021 as the pilot year, and then again in 2022. Um, and again, just as background information, the council identifies programs for AO partnership, um, typically in cases where the field will benefit from the presence and support of a more localized network of regranting organizations, and or when grantees will benefit from implementation by an organization that may be more streamlined and its financial processing than the state um, and or its in ability to engage in ongoing programmatic support um, for these initiatives. So in these relationships, you see on your screen, we have uh, the roles and responsibilities of the CAC and then the roles and responsibilities of the administering organizations. So the CAC is, of course, responsible for the primary distribution of funds to the administering organizations in a timely manner so that those can then be redistributed to the field. Um, it is also our responsibility as the CAC to provide ongoing engagement um, with the administering organizations, um, which typically looks like at least monthly, if not biweekly meetings to offer feedback, approval for various documents and support over the course of the grant period. Um, so very much a partnership kind of engagement. 
Um, if applicable, if we have multiple administering organizations um, that are administering a program with us, um, we will convene those AOs together um, to give the opportunity for co-learning and sharing about challenges, resources, ideas, strategies. Um, and then our uh, one of our biggest tasks is program evaluation in an ongoing manner to see what's working in these relationships, what we can be doing differently and better as we go forward. So th that's what the CAC is committed to in the partnerships with administering organizations. Um, then we look to the administering organization for the uh, primary program design and implementation. So as we talk through both of these programs today, you'll see um, the CAC has set up sort of the large scale infrastructure of the expectations of what will happen, but then it's really up to the administering organization to put the program design in place and to implement it. Um, so that we can support the administering organizations, we do expect that the AOs will participate in an ongoing dialogue and collaboration with us. So again, attending meetings regularly, keeping us updated on what's happening, what the challenges are, what the needs are in terms of support that we can give to you. Um, so that ongoing dialogue. Um, of course, participation in reporting um, and program evaluation. You'll see both of these programs are two-year grants. So there's an interim report that's due and a final report um, and so that we can utilize that information to um, develop the programs further. And then additionally, there are some program specific requirements that I'll go through as we talk about the Individual Artist Fellowship AO and then the Arts Administrators Pipeline Program. So in terms of applicant eligibility, um, some of these will be quite familiar um, if you've applied to a CAC for a grant before, others of them are specific to AOs. Um, generally speaking, uh, we do make grants only to California-based organizations, so your organization does have to be based uh, here in California. Um, in terms of organizational type, uh, we make grants to 501c3 organizations. Um, and uh, so any non-governmental applicant must demonstrate proof of nonprofit status as a 501c3. Additionally, we also do make grants to arts-based units of local government and to tribal governments. Um, financial documentation, um, as an applicant, you must provide a minimum of two years of basic financial information uh, to demonstrate that you have at least two years of uh, programming history. We do require that applicants sign off that they are in good standing with the California Secretary of State's office. And finally, um, that signatures are required on all documents. Um, so things like letters of agreement, um, fiscal sponsorship, paperwork, um, all of those do require signatures in order for an application to be eligible. So those are kind of the basic parameters for um, administering organization applicants who's eligible and what will be expected. Um, and I'm going to dive now into um, the two programs themselves. Um, we'll be going through these fairly speedily. And again, um, don't worry. Uh, to, we will have time for question and answer. And also, I do want to make sure everyone knows um, most of the information, all of the information, in fact, that I'm going to be going through in the next few minutes is contained in our program guidelines, which are available on our website on the program landing pages for these two um, offerings. So please don't feel the need to take furious notes. Um, all of it is available for you to peruse after this webinar. Um, and again, if you have specific questions, we'll make sure to take time to answer those. So for the Individual Artists Fellowship Program, um, in terms of background, uh, the CAC's policies and practices uh, prioritize racial equity. Um, that is, in fact, uh, the nexus of the strategic framework that we adopted in 2019 um, and very much a guide for our programming going forward. We are committed to funding opportunities that support all of California's creative ecosystems. And one of the ways in which we have begun doing that in the last couple of years is by offering fellowship support to artists. Um, this is additionally supportive of our strategic framework in its aspiration to directly support the individual artists that embody aesthetics, which is a key value of the CAC, and that recognizes all art forms and artistic traditions um, to enable full creative expression for the people of California. 
Uh, in the pilot year of this program, which was 2021, the CAC received almost 4,000 applications from around the state and made grants to 186 fellows. So it became very clear that there is a deep need in the field for this kind of support um, and was definitely a, a guide for council that this was the kind of program that we needed to uh, make sure we had partners in place around the state to help facilitate hence moving to the administering organization model. Um, so through a network of regionally based administering organizations, the Individual Artist Fellowship or IAF program is going to continue to recognize, uplift and celebrate the excellence of California artists practicing all, any and all art forms. And in doing so, the CAC hopes to showcase the centrality of artists leadership in the ongoing evolution of our traditional and contemporary cultures. Um, I really want to make sure to highlight here um, when we say we use the terminology of excellence precisely what it is that we mean. Um, excellence in this program is defined as having a unique artistic vision, having an ongoing commitment to creative practice, and being engaged with and impacting upon the larger cultural ecosystem. So um, as you dive into the program guidelines, you see the questions that we are asking for the AOs and that we are then asking the AOs to ask applicants. They're really focused on those areas. So in terms of program requirements, and this is again for the administering organizations, um, applicants will be serving one of four geographic regions, uh, making unrestricted grants to artists in all counties in that region, um, using the review criteria of creative vision, aesthetic excellence, and community engagement and social impact. Um, and again, there, there are further definitions of each of those uh, in the program guidelines. Um, so that's one requirement. The next is that the AO will provide access and support for individual artists and culture bearers throughout the course of the application, award, and evaluation processes, and engage in robust culturally and discipline-specific engagement and outreach to ensure comprehensive geographic reach within the service area. Um, just to reiterate, this is a program where we are hoping to have fellows awarded in all 58 counties across the state of California and in all disciplines. Um, so there is no disciplinary restriction on the individual artists and culture bearers that can apply um, in this cycle of funding. Additionally, um, we are requiring that each of the administering organizations convene their fellows at least once over the course of the grant activity period so that the fellows can engage in networking with one another and in co-learning opportunities. And that uh, the AOs provide a platform, uh, including not necessarily limited to virtual or print publications, exhibitions or performances to increase the visibility of the work of the fellows. So um, again, some additional support mechanisms here um, up, above and beyond the cash award to the fellows so that they can convene and co-learn and that also their work can be made visible, more visible through this program. And then finally, um, engaging in regular reporting to and collaboration with the CAC, including providing the interim and final reports. So those are the program requirements for the Individual Artists Fellowship Program. Um, and then these are the eligible request amounts. So I just referred to uh, the regional basis of uh, this program. We have identified four regions um, for this administering organization program, um, basically based on uh, population, um, total population. So we broke the state into regions that have approximately equivalent populations so that we can make sure we are uh, distributing resources evenly um, around the state in terms of the population density. Um, ap uh, administering organization applicants can apply to serve one or more of these regions. And for each region, there is a dedicated award amount that will go to that AO to support that region. Um, I'm actually going to, if you'll bear with me here, I'm going to open up a, a different window which has a um, map of the, uh, the regions, um, which may be a little easier to see. 
um, that's actually not going to work. So we'll just we'll we'll keep going here with the slideshow. Um, so you can see the names of the counties um, in each region. So region one um, for a total award of nine hundred and twenty five thousand dollars will serve Imperial, Orange, Riverside, San Bernardino and San Diego counties. Region two for a total award of eight hundred and twenty five thousand dollars will serve Los Angeles County. Region three for a total of $700,000 will serve Fresno, Kern, Kings, Inyo, Madera, Mariposa, Merced, Monterey, San Benito, San Luis Obispo, San Mateo, Santa Barbara, Santa Clara, Santa Cruz, Stanislaus, Tulare, and Ventura counties. And finally, Region 4, um, which is in the northern part of the state, uh, for a total award of $800,000 will uh, serve Alameda, Alpine, Amador, Butte, Calaveras, Calusa, Contra Costa, Del Norte, El Dorado, Glen, Humboldt, Lake, Lassen, Marin, Mendocino, Modoc, Mono, Napa, Nevada, Placer, Plumas, Sacramento, San Francisco, San Joaquin, Shasta, Sierra, Siskiyou, Solano, Sonoma, Sutter, Tehima, Trinity, Tuolumne, Yolo, and Yuba counties. Um, and naming each of those because, again, we really do are committed to making sure that each and every county in California is served through this program. Apologies for not being able to pull the map up. Um, that is linked on the program landing page. So if that is an easier way to synthesize this information, um, that is available to you to pull up as a PDF. So again, um, just looking at this, thinking about perhaps the region and or regions that you want to serve. Please also note that administering organizations may utilize up to 20% of the grant funds to support costs associated with the program design and implementation. Um, we do recognize that we, as the CAC, are looking for the administering organizations to offer significant support to uh, the individual artists over the course of this program um, and recognize that that labor um, needs to come with uh, adequate compensation. So those are the eligible request amounts. In terms of funding structure, um, there are three levels of funding um, that we offered in the pilot program um, that we would like to continue in this next iteration through the uh, administering organizations. Um, folks identifying as emerging artists receive grants of $5,000, fellowships of $5,000. And in terms of definition, um, emerging artists are those that are in the beginning stages of making their work public and engaging the larger community in their practice. Um, individuals at this career stage may have had a few public showings of their work, uh, but may not yet have ongoing resources or support. Um, the second uh, tier here is for established artists, and those are grants of $10,000. Artists in the established tier regularly make their work public and engage the larger community in their practice. Individuals in this tier can give multiple examples of artistic and or cultural works that have made significant social impact. And then finally, the legacy fellows, uh, those are awards of $50,000. And artists in this tier are able to point to significant bodies of work produced over a substantial period of time that have engaged communities and that have made significant social impact. Artists in this tier may also be able to point to emerging and established artists that they have or are mentoring or have otherwise positively influenced. Um, and again, uh, we're asking that each administering organization make grants to a minimum of three fellows in each tier. Um, if you're doing the math, you'll see you can make many more than three awards in any given category um, with the total award amount going to each region. Um, but we wanted to just articulate that as a baseline. So we make sure that um, some folks in each tier are getting funded. Um, additionally, if you were aware of the pilot program as a pilot uh, offering of the individual artist fellowship, you may recall that we had um, specific numbers of years that people had to be working um, tied to these uh, funding tiers, these uh, career tiers. We heard loud and clear from the field that that structure was very ineffective for them, um, just recognizing artists and creative practitioners careers 
are often nonlinear and um, folks are evolving and the public and private uh, nature of their work may be shifting. So we really intentionally restructured this this time around um, to give folks parameters um, that could guide them and where they might be the most successful in applying, but without putting really rigid structures um, in terms of timeline on where they should be applying. So that's the funding structure uh, for the individual artists program. And that wraps up the sort of basic uh, programmatic outline of the individual artist fellowship uh, program and the way that we're hoping that the AOs will engage. I'm sure there are lots of questions coming up, so feel free to put those in the Q&A um, and we'll get to them in just a few minutes. Uh, before we get to our Q&A though, um, I'd love to talk through the other of our programs uh, today, which is our Arts Administrators Pipeline Program, again, formerly called our Arts Administrators of Color Program. Um, so in terms, again, of just setting the stage and the background for, for this program, um, we as the CAC are committed to ensuring a vibrant, inclusive, resilient and healthy arts and culture ecosystem in California in which the staff and programs of arts and culture organizations reflect the diversity, creativity, and cultures of their communities. And alongside that, we recognize that communities across our state have experienced systemic disparities and inequities within the field of arts administration specifically. Um, some identified structural barriers that we are aware of for careers in the arts include a culture of unpaid internships within the arts, inaccessible educational requirements by employers, and or geographic or social isolation from cultural institution and paid staff opportunities. Um, additionally, we acknowledge that uh, barriers of access such as those are compounded by factors such as socioeconomic status, geographic isolation, gender identity, racial identity, and disability. And we are committed to addressing those barriers in order to achieve greater equity. So that is really um, what gave uh, life to this program specifically, is um, helping create a pathway and a pipeline to mitigate those structural inequities that we see in our field. <laughs> so the Arts Administrators Pipeline Fellowship is intended to both support the professional trajectory of individuals who otherwise may not have the opportunity to develop their careers as arts administrators, that's one, and two, to increase the capacity of arts organizations for authentic community engagement with those that they serve. So we are looking to award funds in this program to one statewide administering organization that will develop and administer the fellowship program over the next two years. Um, the AO is going to develop a fellow driven grant program identifying approximately 11, 11 emerging arts administrators for support and then pairing them with an equal number of arts and cultural organizations that are dedicated to equity and community engagement and that will result in a 12 month paid fellowship. Um, we, it's our intention that both the fellows and the host organizations represent the geographic diversity of California. Um, and in partnership with the CAC, the AO will design and administer application processes for both fellows and host organizations, supply a suite of resources for the, for the fellows, including a livable wage stipend, and provide professional development opportunities. Um, it will also re-grant funds to the host organizations to provide those fellows salaries and benefits and other expenses necessary to create that effective fellowship experience for both the organization and, of course, for the fellows. So again, this is going to be one grant uh, for $1,165,000 um, to one organization that is going to uh, develop and implement this program statewide. Um, and as in the Individual Artist Fellowship Program, the administering organization may utilize up to 20% of the grant funds for the costs associated with developing and implementing the program. So in terms of the program specific requirements, uh, many of them I just referred to, um, developing and maintaining a detailed program framework and work plan uh, that's clear about timelines, outcomes, and deliverables. So again, this is very much uh, in dialogue between the CAC and the AO. 
um, managing the two grant processes. So first to identify the individuals that will be the fellows, and then two to identify the host organizations that will be appropriate hosts for those fellows. Um, developing and implementing a cohort-based learning community for the fellows. So again, here uh, we acknowledge the deep value um, for the fellows learning with and from one another um, out of the pilot of this program. That was one of uh, the things that the fellows identified as the most valuable was the opportunity to learn alongside and with one another. Additionally, uh, the AO will provide support and guidance to the host organizations. So again, recognizing um, it's it, the idea here is that the host organizations are not only benefiting from the presence and labor and ideas of the fellow, but that they are also providing mentorship and support for that fellow within their organization. Um, and then that, that will then require support from the administering organization to make sure um, that that work is being supported. And then finally, um, as always, participating in program evaluation, um, including but not limited to feedback and data collection, the interim and final reports, um, and other ways in which we as the CAC can understand from the AO um, what worked, what didn't, what would be helpful in the future, et cetera. So those are the program requirements um, for the uh, arts administrators pipeline. Um, and then these are the review criteria. And I, I'm lumping these together because the overarching categories are going to be the same for both programs. So if you're looking at the Individual Artist Fellowship AO and the Arts Administrators Pipeline AO guidelines alongside one another, you'll see that um, the headers and much of the text underneath the review criteria um, are similar. So um, we do accept applications. Uh, through our online grant portal, which is smartsymbol.com. Um, if you have not already, in order to apply, you're going to need to create an account and certify your organization. Um, we don't, uh, just in honor of our time together uh, this, this late morning, um, I'm not gonna go through step-by-step -step how to do that, but um, please do know that the resources to walk you through that process are available on our website under our grant resources tab. Um, our colleagues have put together very clear step-by-step -step tutorials for you. And of course, if you have any trouble um, with that process, please feel free to reach out to us directly. Um, so again, both of these two programs have the same basic review criteria that once you have filled in those applications and submitted them, um, they will be adjudicated on. Um, and the first of these is uh, centering community artists. So we are looking uh, for the AOs to demonstrate experience, capacity, and ongoing commitment to engage and uplift historically and systemically under-resourced communities. Um, we're also looking to see that the AO can demonstrate experience, capacity, and commitment um, to uplift historically and systemically excluded and erased artists, cultural practitioners, um, and those that practice uh, traditional arts and culture. Um, this experience, capacity, and ongoing commitment um, should be reflected throughout your proposal. And I will take this moment to note that as you open these applications or as you read through the, uh, the program guidelines, you'll see that there are specific application questions that are relevant to each of these review criteria. So you will have the opportunity to speak specifically to how your organization, your staff, um, can uh, are meeting these requirements and are, are answering to these review criteria. So that's the first section you'll see in the application is on how you uh, center community artists. The second is organizational capacity and readiness. Um, so we're looking to see that uh, the applicant demonstrates um, the applicant organization and the key project personnel have a minimum of two years of experience working in the nonprofit and or arts and culture fields and in elevating diverse communities across the state. Um, also looking for a demonstration that the applicant organization and key personnel have at least two years of grants management experience um, and the organizational capacity to re-grant um, these funds. Again, um, there are lots of structures of support that we're looking for in uh, these administering organization programs. And a key piece of it is re-granting the funds um, to organizations and to individuals. So looking to make sure that the applicant has that capacity. Um, and then also uh, a demonstration that the organization can design and implement 
a program with significant reach across the entire service area. So for example, uh, of course, in the um, pipeline program, that is statewide. Um, so a demonstration in that organizational capacity and readiness section that your organization can reach the entirety of the state um, with this opportunity. Then in the Individual Artist Fellowship Program, um, we have just broken it down into four regions. So the capacity of the organization to reach each and every county, diverse communities within each of those counties um, to make sure that folks are aware of the opportunity and are supported in applying for the opportunity. So that's organizational capacity and readiness. Um, the third uh, point is going to differ uh, the program design and implementation because the two programs are different and asking for different things. Uh, but really, each of those is going to be based around uh, how your organization um, imagines they would put together this program, what the design would look like, what the implementation would be. Um, so again, for each of these, how you are, uh, what the application structure might look like what convenings might look like, what those publication platforms might look like for the individual artists, what cohort learning opportunities might look like for the pipeline. Um, so you'll have a series of questions um, that you can look at and think through uh, what the program design might look like. Um, you certainly don't have to have all of the answers right now. That's a question that we get a lot. Um, there Again, it is a two-year grant period. So you uh, have time at the beginning of the program to develop the ideas in conversation with the CAC. Um, really, that uh, review criterion is just to get a sense of how you imagine this might look like. What would the first steps be? Um, how might you realize the goals of the program? So that's the intention there. And then finally, with accessibility, um, we're looking to see that the administering organization demonstrates that its programs, services, information, and facilities um, including online spaces, are accessible to individuals with disabilities. Um, so those are the review criteria. Um, again, they're assessed differently based on the two programs. You will see in the program guidelines that under each of these uh, headers and the definition of the review criterion, there are the questions that will be asked. So even before you uh, open your application on the Smart Simple portal, you can read through those questions, begin thinking um, with your colleagues about how you might respond to them. Um, that's available to you right now. Um, as with our uh, all of our grant programs, uh, peer review panels will read and adjudicate all of the eligible applications. Um, and so uh, the review and the reviews will be based on these four criteria. Panelists review each criterion according to a six point scale, with six being exemplary, that's the highest, and uh, one week being the lowest. And again, they give a score to each review criterion and then one final score overall. And then council and agency staff use these ranks to guide funding decisions. Uh, our council body is our final decision maker for all grant awards and funding allocations. Um, and that will be taking the panel ranks um, and service area into account. Uh, next is the program timeline. The timelines are the same for both of these programs. So the applications opened on July 14th. Um, we are now in the midst of the application period. The deadline is August 31st at 11.59 p.m. And I will just implore you all, please, please, to uh, try and submit those applications uh, before the last, the very last minute. Um, staff are here to help you should you encounter technical difficulties or have questions. Um, the, our ability to respond uh, gets impacted the closer we get to the deadline. So again, I highly, highly encourage you to um, try and get those in at least a couple of days out. Um, our work days end at five o'clock. So even though the deadline is until 11.59, if something happens in those last few hours, we're, we're not there to support and that's heartbreaking. So um, please, please aim for before August 31st. We'll be convening the panels uh, over the month of September to do their application review and adjudication. And then uh, the funding decisions will be made by our council at a public meeting uh, that's going to be scheduled for late October. Um, and then we will let folks know, the administering organizations know uh, in November if you are being awarded. And then the grant activity period, again, is for two years, uh, beginning January 1st of 2023 
going through that entire calendar year and the following calendar year um, and ending December 31st, 2024. Um, you'll notice there's an extra line in here than we usually have in our program timelines, which is the fellowship period. So although the activity period for the administering organizations is two years, um, the fellowship period itself will be just one year, both for the individual artist fellows and the arts administrator fellows. Um, and we're looking for that to be from April 1st, 2023 to March 31st, 2024, so that there is, again, that uh, program development timeline in the first four months of the uh, grant activity period for you all to work with the CAC. And then there's significant time on the back end to collect feedback from the fellows, from the host organizations, um, and to engage in program evaluation with us. Two report deadlines. The interim report will be due um, 30 days after the midpoint of the grant activity period, so January 31st, 2024, and then a final report due January 31st, 2025. And that uh, wraps up my um, spiel here. Um, thank you so much. I see we have uh, a bunch of questions already coming in the Q&A box. Um, please feel free to continue entering those as we go. Um, I will answer as many as I can live for us all right now. Um, if I don't get to your question in the Q&A, I will respond to you directly after this. Um, I also want to take this time to uh, make sure folks know we do have office hours each and every week between now and the deadline. Um, Wednesdays from noon to 1 p.m. and Thursdays from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. Those happen on a weekly basis. You can register on the program page for either program. Um, you show up. It's an open space. I'm there for the hour. Um, you can pop in, ask a question, pop out. You can stay and listen to other folks' questions. Um, we found that those can be really, really valuable learning opportunities. So I would definitely commend that to you all if that would be valuable. All right, so opening up our Q&A box here. Um, all right, so uh, one person asked about the two-year grant program. Um, does that mean the organization or the program itself? Um, so I, I'm going to answer that in two ways to make sure that I'm uh, responding to your question appropriately as you intended it. So um, in terms of the eligibility requirement, um, that's actually in uh, the enabling legislation of the California Arts Council that we may only make grants to organizations with a two year history of arts program or a number of years of arts programming. Um, and so we do require that folks have been doing this work for a minimum of two years in order to be eligible to apply. Um, and then in terms of the grant activity period, again, that will be from January 1st of this coming year, 2023, to December 31st of 2024. So a two-year grant activity period for the administering organizations to develop the program with the CAC, roll it out, identify the fellows um, and the host organizations in that program, pair them up, make the grants, um, support the, the program throughout, and then um, at the end of the fellows timeline, um, get data back from them and work with the CAC to um, collect data and get some program evaluation done. So hopefully that answers that, that question. Feel free to uh, pop another one in if, if I missed it. Um, someone asks, will we have access to the slideshow after the webinar? Yes, you will. Um, so the uh, this the recording of this webinar, as well as the slide deck, will be posted on the program page um, in the next couple of dates. So you will certainly have access to there. Um, and then the four geographic regions. Yes, so those are uh, the four that we um, identified listing. Um, we listed all the counties. The visual depiction of that uh, map is also on the program landing page for the Individual Artist Fellowship Program. Um, essentially, it's um, the northern section of the state. Um, all of the counties are proximate. So uh, the northern section of the state, the central uh, section of the state, and the southern section of the state, and then Los Angeles County is pulled out on its own. Um, again, we, we looked for county um, consolidation that could get us to approximately the same population density, since Los Angeles County represents almost uh, a quarter of the population of California. That's why that one is pulled out in itself. So again, 
almost the same uh, population numbers um, for each region. And again, that's why the award amounts are slightly different is it is reflective of the actual population percentage, the total award amount. Um, okay, so uh, the question about giving a minimum of three legacy artists. Um, so again, there is a requirement that uh, at least three um, grantees be funded in each tier. So at least three emerging artists, at least three established artists, and at least three legacy artists. Um, and that was certainly very intentional. Um, it is a substantial portion uh, of the, the regranting funds um, to for the legacy artists. And that was one of the reasons that uh, the council decided to make that explicit in the program. Um, in the pilot uh, phase of the program, um, that total award amount was approximately the same as it is in this second rollout. We funded 21 legacy artists. Um, so divide that by uh, four, um, we would actually have five legacy artists. So the requirement to fund at least three is slightly below what we did last time. Um, but we do find that it's important to make sure that um, folks at each tier in each region feel like they do have an opportunity to get awarded. So that's the, the background for that requirement. Um, next question, um, can an administering organization selection process and or panels choose to reclassify applicants to a more appropriate tier if they have applied to one that doesn't really match their status? That's a great question. Um, typically, um, we, uh, we as the CAC um, do not allow folks to make adjustments to their application after the deadline. That said, um, a, key strategy um, that we would hope to be supporting the AOs and implementing is making sure that that guidance is coming out on the front end. So when people call you up or they're at a workshop and they say, hey, where do I fit? Um, the AO is able to give them some guidance around, all right, here's the language about what an established artist is. Does that feel like it resonates with where you are in your career? or does it uh, feel like more like a legacy or more like an emerging? Um, and so folks feel supported in making that decision at the outset, as opposed to you get an application on the back end and it's in the wrong, in the wrong bucket. So that would certainly be the, the strategy that we would suggest. The next question, I uh, would love to hear if you feel a nonprofit with a specific discipline focus would still be considered as an AO for these programs to administer recognizing that both programs are encompassing of all art disciplines? That's a great question. Thank you for asking. So certainly um, that is fine. If you are uh, coming from a dis discipline specific uh, arts organization, you are absolutely eligible to apply. What I would definitely encourage you to do in the body of the application, especially in that organizational capacity and readiness section, is talk about how you would move out of your own disciplinary cohort to make sure that artists working across disciplines were supported in applying and felt like they could see themselves in your program offering. Um, but certainly um, you would be eligible to apply for sure. Um, okay, so uh, next question is thanking for the presentation. Thank you for being here. Um, wanted to ask if I could provide uh, an example of the type of applicant that this program is looking for. Um, a little bit of confusion about whether the program is suited to individuals or organizations. Um, so that, thank you for asking that. Um, so right now at this phase of the program, this is an organizational application um, to be an administering organization to re-grant the funds for one of these programs and to implement the other support mechanisms uh, for each program. So if you are listening to this webinar right now and you are an individual artist that is hoping to apply for a fellowship, or you're an organization that is hoping to be a host organization to apply to have a fellow, I'm really glad you're here and hearing this information. Um, your time to apply is going to be this spring once we have the administering organizations in place and we as the CAC have worked with them to develop their program guidelines, their application structures, um, and then that will be your opportunity to apply to the AO um, to receive that funding. Um, next question is uh, for the pipeline program, does it have to be multidisciplinary or could it focus one working with one specific arts discipline? So thank you so much, uh, Sarah, for that question. Um, so certainly a host organization could be a discipline and specific organization. So for example, you might have 
uh, an arts administrator fellow that comes from the dance world and that's their focus and specificity. And you have a host organization apply that's also a dance organization, they feel like a great fit and that's wonderful. Um, in terms of the opportunity that should be open for fellows that are working in all disciplines and host organizations working in all disciplines. So again, while the particular fellows and organizations that are identified may be specific, the opportunity um, should be open to anyone to apply. So hopefully that's clear. Um, okay, this is a, a broad but very wonderful and relevant question. Um, do I think the administering organization model is the one that CAC will continue to use, or are we still in the test phase? So that's a great question. Um, this, uh, and I I'll, will sort of defer um, and recommend uh, listening into our next council meeting. Um, I, our next one is coming up on August 18th. Um, the agenda is going to be posted, I believe, later this week or perhaps on Monday. Um, but I know the council is in deep conversation about um, the most effective way to work with administering organizations, um, what's appropriate to expect, what compensation levels are um, appropriate to support AOs with. Um, so I would definitely recommend uh, to all of you to listen into those conversations. Um, you also always have the opportunity to make public comment. Um, so that's uh, that would be my recommendation. I will say um, this is fairly new for us. Again, we we utilized our first administering organization model in uh, 2020, um, and we are we have a number of different sort of variations of the model going. Some that are as with our pipeline program one statewide administering organization, others such as the individual artists and our creative core program that are regionally specific. Um, so certainly a lot of learning um, is happening. A lot of data is being collected on what the benefits are um, and what the challenges are of these various models. So thank you very much for that question. Um, is there an opportunity to upload letters of support in the fellowship administering organization application? Yes. So under the uh, organizational capacity and readiness section of the um, application, you have the opportunity to upload a couple of samples which demonstrate your organizational capacity and readiness. So if you have a letter of support from uh, another organization or an individual speaking to um, the work that your organization does and your capacity to do this work, that would definitely be the place to include it. Uh, the next question, uh, will these AO grants be available to apply for next year in 2023, or is this the last year the grant will be available for administering organizations? So that's a great question, Chandler. Thank you. Um, so that, uh, again, the allocations um, to programs and the decision on what programs are going to be funded year to year um, is made by our council. Um, that typically happens over the course of the fall. So again, I would definitely recommend to everyone um, keeping an eye on our website where the agendas for all the council meetings are posted publicly to see when they are going to be deciding, having conversations and deciding on what programs to fund in 2023 um, so that you can listen and hear and take part um, in those conversations via public comment. Um, so that that would be the way to, to know and see about that. Um, next question is, does the 501c3 organization have to have arts and culture as its primary mission? Okay, so we do require a two-year history of arts programming. So if this is, um, if arts programming is not something your organization has ever done before, um, this would not be the appropriate uh, vein for you. Um, that said, if you do other things in addition to arts and culture, for example, if you're an organization um, that makes grants to uh, social service organizations, organizations and to arts organizations, you would be eligible to apply for these grant programs. Um, and then it looks like the last question in the queue is, what does local government and arts-based unit of municipal or county government or a tribal government mean exactly? Great. So um, for example, um, we have many organizations across the state that we work with that are city or county arts commissions or departments of arts and culture. So a unit of government um, that's a subunit of a city or a county that is specifically dedicated to arts and culture programming. Um, and then tribal governments as entities are also eligible to apply for our funds. Again, that's in addition to nonprofit organizations with that history of arts programming. 
So I hope that answers that question. Great, we have another one. Um, okay, so uh, this specific organization service area um, has been split between regions three and four, which poses a significant challenge and may keep us from applying. Um, so this, is, I will just sort of name, name this. Um, Anytime you're looking at a, a regional map um, of California, the regions are broken down slightly differently. Um, even with the CAC, we have regions that were designated for Creative Core. Those are different from the regions identified for the Individual Artist Fellowship for a variety of reasons. Um, one thing that I will point to in, in this program, in the Individual Artist Program, is an organization can apply to serve more than one region. So um, for example, Sean, with your question, um, coming from the Bay Area, some of those counties that are typically um, rolled into the Bay Area region are in region three, some are in region four. Your organization certainly could apply to serve both areas and that, that would be an aggregated award. So the total award for region three and the total award for region four, um, you could apply for to do that. Um, so hopefully that helps to answer. Um, again, similarly, an organization could apply to serve all four regions um, and talk about how they would do that and apply for the whole the whole pot to regrant across the state. Um, again, the the breakdown here was a direction from council very specifically um, to try and get towards greater geographic equity, which was a major challenge in the first round of this program. Um, so that we're making sure that we get to all 58 counties. And so again, the, the breakdown of which counties ended up in which regions were an effort to get us as close as we could get to without actually breaking apart a county um, to roughly um, equivalent population sizes in each region. Um, okay, and then a follow-up question, do we have to be a local government entity or are nonprofit orgs who are not local government eligible? Yes. Nonprofit organizations are eligible, yes, um, and local government is also uh, also eligible. Um, okay, a uh, question: Could a county office of education be considered an AO? So um, I, the sort of general answer to that would be no, because typically we make grants when we're talking about uh, units of government to arts-based units of government. So um, again, if it's a county department of arts and culture, um, that that would be a, a granting organization or grantee organization for the CAC. Um, but typically those are the uh, departments um, that we make grants to in terms of local government subunits. These are great questions, y'all. Feel free to keep them coming. We have about five minutes. And while you all are uh, thinking on what those questions might be, I'll just um, point you towards some additional resources. Again, um, please do feel free um, and encouraged to register for office hours and attend those. Um, that, that's a great way to just have some more dialogue um, about the specific questions um, for your organization or as you're diving into the application and you're not sure what something's asking or how to respond, we can absolutely talk through those. Um, additionally, uh, all of the registrants for the webinar, um, we will subscribe to Artbeat, which is our weekly e-newsletter. E it's been on something of a hiatus, but it's coming back. And it is really a great way to just keep yourself informed about program openings, deadlines, other opportunities. Um, of course, you can follow us on Facebook, on Instagram, and on Twitter. And the handles are there on the bottom left of your screen. Um, and again, uh, you see the link to our website there. The program pages are under the grants tab. If you scroll down to grant programs, um, each of the programs that are open are listed there. And so you can see whole lots of resources. In addition to the program guidelines, we have the regional maps for the Individual Artist Fellowship. We have resources about how to navigate Smart Simple, um, other policies uh, regarding our grant programs that um, can be really helpful to read through. So I definitely would recommend uh, taking some time and doing a deep dive into those program pages so you can really digest all of the information that's there. Um, we also have a frequently asked questions document um, that we update weekly. So um, please do feel free to reference that. Um, the FAQs are broken down by program, so you don't have to read through the whole document. You can jump right to, okay, what are people asking about these AO programs um, and get that information there as well. 
We have a couple more questions here um, before we end. Uh, someone's asking, will there be a scenario uh, where the award would be split between two organizations in one region? For example, the Individual Artist Fellowship. So uh, yes, potentially. Um, we have not ruled that out as a scenario in the guidelines that there might be multiple awardees in uh, one region. Um, the total allocation will remain the same. So for example, if there are two organizations in uh, the region that's getting $800,000 and they both get a six, and it seems like, yes, they can really complement the work, um, then they would likely each get $400,000 to uh, disseminate, right? Um, but that's certainly uh, a possibility that remains open. Um, we're, we're trying to keep a lot of potentialities open as this is a fairly nascent funding strategy for us. So to see what's really gonna work um, in terms of getting the most localized support out. Um, a question, would a new arts and culture commission for a city be eligible? So that's a great question. Um, for local units of local government, as well as nonprofits, um, we are required to look for that two years of programming history. So um, the, a new arts and culture commission um, would need to demonstrate two years of uh, programming history in order to be eligible um, for the grant. Um, and then final question here, do budget sizes of AOs have any impact on eligibility? Meaning, if the pipeline grant is four or five times the size of our annual operating budget, would that make us less competitive? Um, and the answer is no. There is no floor um, in terms of the minimum uh, total operating revenue for an administering organization applicant to be eligible. Um, that said, if you have a $100,000 operating budget and you're applying to administer $1.165 million, um, you'd want to be very clear in your project design and implementation and in your organizational capacity and readiness section, how you are going to sort of scale up to be able to um, receive those funds and steward those funds. Um, but you have the space to do that in the application. So there is definitely no, no restriction on, on folks applying to do that. All right, everyone, um, in respect of your time, I'm going to close us out here. I just want to share my gratitude and gratitude on behalf of our council and all of the CAC staff um, for you joining us today. Um, these are really, really exciting opportunities um, that we see uh, for our agency to partner more deeply um, and to reach local communities more effectively and equitably. Um, so we're just really grateful for your participation in these conversations. I really look forward to seeing many of you in office hours in the coming weeks. And uh, yes, please make sure to get those applications in before 1159 on August 31st. With that, everyone, have a great rest of your day.